This, my friends, is a beautiful cake batter just waiting to be baked, iced with chocolate icing, and enjoyed. Howdy folks, I am Martha and I'm in the kitchen today. Dorothy's editing the video. We both welcome you to Hirschberg's Miracle Homestead. The kitchen action we're having today is a three layer yellow cake. We are using the nine inch pans, three of them because it's a three layer cake. And with doing the nine inch, we are making one and a half recipes of batter. And that will give us the batter we need for the each layer plus a few cupcakes. If you're doing just one recipe, you might want to use the 8 inch pan. All right, I think we're ready to go across the ingredients and then throw it together. The ingredients are butter or margarine, eggs, egg yolks, baking powder, salt, baking soda, pure vanilla extract, milk, sour cream, granulated sugar, and all-purpose flour, and we sift ours. Okay, we are ready to throw these ingredients together to make a beautiful three-layer yellow cake with chocolate icing. Butter or margarine, and the sugar. The paddle attachment. Now we'll start it slow and then put it up to medium speed and mix it till it's light and fluffy. Three or four minutes should do it. So we will get it going. Let the sugar get incorporated with the butter and margarine so it doesn't splash out. Now I can put it up to a higher speed. And we'll let that mix and do its thing. This has been four minutes. That right there is what we were looking for. Just a nice fluffy mixture. Add the eggs one at a time. And of course let it mix between each egg. Alright, we are ready for the scrape down. I'm going to scrape the paddle off first. I often like to take the mixing bowl off of the mixer to scrape it down. I can just get to it better. I'll put the plate there in case any drippings. If it's hanging on to the side, it's probably on the bottom as well. So we'll be sure the bottom and the sides are all scraped down well. Now we'll let this mix until it's incorporated well. I think that should do it. Next will be the vanilla, then the baking powder, baking soda, and salt. There's often more than one way of doing something, and you could mix the, all the dry ingredients together, but this works just as well. And now mix this. I'm going to mix the milk and sour cream together. So in a little bowl, I'm putting the milk and the sour cream. This spatula is a mate to what I was using earlier. It's just a different color and a different size. But it came in the same package from Amazon. And now with the whisk, I'll whisk this together. To save myself in creating a mess when I pour it into the mixing bowl, I'm going to pour the milk and sour cream in a measuring cup and then have a spout to pour. Starting out with the flour. These bowls here are pretty, but they're hard to dump out of, so I'll just spoon it out at least to begin with. Put in about two different increments here. Two or three. We'll see. I'm on a low speed so your flour doesn't poof out. Then add milk and the sour cream. 
Let that mix a while. And now some more flour. Yes, it appears as though the sides need scraping down, but we'll save that till the end. I'm going to do this in three different increments. Mix. Milk and sour cream. There we go. Milk and sour cream. Now that's scrape down time, including the measuring cup. Now it's easy to scrape the measuring cup out. And now the scrape down. One last mix, and this will be a low speed for just until it's combined. Take the paddle off. This, my friends, is a beautiful cake batter just waiting to be baked, iced with chocolate icing, and enjoyed. We want two and a third cup batter per layer for the cake that we make. It depends how thick you want your each cake layer. Layer number one. Layer number two. And we have a little bit of batter in here yet for one or two cupcakes. I have one that's just eight cups instead of 12. Let me get that one. If you notice, I have them in the middle, so when you get a hold of the pan to pull it out, you're not trying to dodge around a cupcake. <laughs> if you're using a conventional oven, you bake it at 350. We're using the convection. It'll be at 340. It still bakes about the same amount of time, about right at 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. You may wonder what I'm doing with the egg whites that were left from the eggs that just took the yolk. I have them in here and there's multiple things you can do with it, but what we will do is add another egg to it, get a little yolk to it, and then fry it up for our dogs. They will love it. The eggs itself on one recipe called for three eggs. So to half that, I needed one and a half egg. So what I did, in the half egg, I just added another yolk to the yolk dish. So anyway, that's neither here nor there, but I thought it was a little tidbit that might be helpful if you need to divide an egg. And the yellow just helps the yellow cake with the color too. I'll see you when this is out of the oven. Well, the cakes are out of the oven, and I will let them sit in the pans for about five minutes before I dump them out. All right, here are the cupcakes. They are cooling. And if you are a new baker and you're wondering how to help assure if a cake is done, let me show you. Okay, often the cake is pulling away from the edge, but the sure thing is take a toothpick, drop it down in toward the center of the cake, and pull it out. If it comes out clean, the cake is done. So this cake is done. I like to use a thin bladed knife and go across the edge of the cake. By the way, I, I think I forgot to mention that I prepared the cake pan by greasing it with Crisco and then taking flour and dusting it with flour. I also place parchment paper on the bottom. And the cooling racks have little feet on. Be sure they're up. So when you flip it over, then it's down on the countertop. Now I just flip them all over right behind each other. Remove it, remove it, and remove it. Remember I said it had parchment paper. You want to be sure to remove the parchment paper. And I want to add here that for those of you who are new to our channel, we're so glad you found us. And for the rest of you, we appreciate and so grateful for your continued support. It means the world to us. And now we'll let the cakes cool and then we'll be back to icing. And we are doing the chocolate buttercream icing. We do have a video for it, but since we need to make it anyway, 
I thought I'd bring you along and then you have the cake and the icing recipes all right here in the description. For the buttercream icing we will need 10x sugar, cocoa, milk, vanilla extract, and butter or margarine. Butter or margarine in the mixing bowl. The paddle attachment. First thing I'm going to do is mix the butter or margarine by itself. That helps fluff it up before the cocoa hits. I'm going to put the vanilla in here and give this a whip. Start out slow. You have vanilla going everywhere. And now take this off so I can dump this in without it puffing back up at me. Before I start the mixer, I have a tea towel here that I dampened and I'm just going to throw it across the mixer. It will not go down in the bowl at all so it's safe, but put it across here and that will help the dust stay contained to the mixer area. So we will start it at a slow speed. Let's take a peek to see how it is. And for you to take a peek, you need to come closer. So I will get you there. Let's take a peek and see. Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to start it now and give it a hard whip. And then we'll take another peek. Okie dokie. Scrape it down. Okay, you can see it's still at the edge there. But we will scrape it down. And when working with icing, I like to use my little stiff spatula. You can see that the butter coated to the side. All right, a hard whip it'll get. Looking mighty fine. I will start out spooning the tenic sugar in. You know what? The cocoa mixture is hanging up there. I can do it this way and get the job done faster. That's about half of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add half of the milk. And come in with the tea towel again. Because 10x sugar also makes a dusty mess. Very good. Adding the rest of the 10x sugar. And the rest of the milk. And we'll mix it till the 10x sugar is combined and the dust isn't there anymore. Let's take a peek. That uh, looks good. Now I will scrape it down and give it one final mix. As always, I like to get the very bottom as well. And now I'm going to put it on a high speed and just let it go for a while. As you can see, the color changed to more of a light brown. But once it's on the cake and then as it sets, it goes back to a dark brown. Look how beautiful that is. One handy thing when you're icing cakes is a lazy Susan, or should it be a working Susan? <laughs> Time to take the wrapping off. And to ensure that you have a more of a level cake on top, if it domes up at all, why well, you can just slice that dome off. It's usually not very much, but most times I will go ahead and take just a little bit off. And that makes it the cake is more level. Then I just go up under the plastic wrap, 
get the cake up. And it's ready to go on the cake board. And this is the layer between layers. And on the side, I'm going to put a crumb coat. Put the layer between the layers. You want a little layer of icing. That's what makes it yummy anyway. And just kind of smooth it out. I decided to bring you in close while we put the crumb coat on the side. I like to take the icing all the way down to the bottom. Get the bottom sealed in. And this is just a thin layer of icing to trap in any crumbs that are on the side. That way when the final layer of icing goes on, there's not a bunch of crumbs that are getting in the icing. So we will just continue putting this on around. And now I'll just go across the whole edging like this to make it even. There we go. And now I'll come in at the top and get rid of that little side wall there. The first layer is done. Now what I'm going to do, the icing is soft. And if you try to put another layer on there right away and ice it, it can slide around a little bit. You can put a skewer down the middle. But rather than do that with just three layers, we're going to put this in the freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes. And that will help this icing to set up. And then we'll come back in and put the second layer on. In the meantime, I will... Put plastic wrap across this. This was in the freezer right at 16 minutes and it's set up. Okie dokie. Set it on top of that layer. Remember the icing that we put on was enough icing to have a nice layer of chocolate icing between the layers. Just fold the saran wrap back off the icing. I'm not going to take it completely off though because I will need to Put it back up and over. Alrighty. A couple of spoons full on here. Then round and round we go. Now the crumb coat for the side. If you notice here you have a little ditch and I like to be sure that's all filled in with icing. And now we will just go across the whole side like we did before. And now this will go in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Okie dokie, we're coming in with our last and final layer. So we will take the wrap off of this one. And often I don't worry about cutting anything off of the top layer. We still want to brush your crumbs off the side. And there it goes. And it is a nice and moist cake. Okay, for the top layer, that's going to be crumb coating only. So I'm just going to put, I'm just put a little bit of icing on there. And just work it a little bit. Just want a thin, thin layer of icing on the top to be the crumb coat. So we will keep working it until the top is covered. Oop. It is a moist cake. There it picked up a little bit of cake. and We'll just go across it again. Doesn't matter how the icing looks now because the final layer will come on top of this yet.
Okay, the final crumb coat layer is done. 10 minutes in the freezer and should be ready to pull out and finish it up. The cake was in a little bit longer than the 10 minutes simply because it was time to get something going for supper. And we preheated the oven for Marie Callender chicken pot pie. It is nice sometimes to have help with supper. So I'm going to stick them in the oven and we'll get to finishing up the cake. I'm going to get a piping bag ready. It's just a small piping bag. It won't take much icing. So we'll use a small tip. Cut the end off a little bit. Drop that down the center. Push it down to the cut open edge. That fits over there. And screw it on. And the simple decoration I put on here is pretty much the extent of our decorating cakes. We never got into it big time. But it does, it does add a finishing touch to have something on the cake. I will go and put some in here so it's ready to go. Now the sides double down. All right, that should do it for no more than what we're going to do. Shake it down to the bottom. And give the final push to the bottom. Now, we'll let that sit there until we are ready for it on the cake. Now, this doesn't really matter. Some people like to do the sides first. And then the top, I always start with the top first and then the sides. But it really doesn't matter, it's personal preference. Now we have an edger. This is the smallest, it has three sizes, a small, medium, and large, and we're going to go with a large. There again, I start with the top. In the center, just go down, hold it in place, and turn the cake. And then on the side, start at the bottom, turn the cake. Once it went all the way around, then gradually bring it up. And this time, if it makes a little ditch, I don't worry about it. Now in with the piping bag. See if I can turn this so I won't be at too uh, much of an awkward position. And with putting the pretties on the edge like this, it covers up any chocolate that is on the board right up by the cake. So here we have the completed cake, other than one thing, that's sitting in the freezer again for 10 or 15 minutes. And then we will be cutting it, and you can see the three layers of cake and the chocolate icing in between the layers. And I'm just going to slide it here on the cake stand. And how pretty is that? When we're ready to cut it, we'll come back together and cut it, and you can see the beautiful layers. Getting the pot pies. So here are the Marie Callender chicken pot pies. And we'll have canned peaches that we canned ourselves. We can leave a link for our canning day of doing peaches. And we'll throw a few bananas with it. Okie dokie. I'll get the first cut down in. Pick it up and pull it out. Look a yonder, look a yonder. Wow, wow. Okay, 
case and there is the inside of that cake. Yum, yum, yum. And there is the slice of cake. So I thank you for joining me in the kitchen as we made this yummy yellow cake with chocolate icing. If you all make it, we hope you enjoy it as much as we do. For recipes for this delicious yellow cake and the chocolate buttercream icing are in the description. And now for the golden thought. This is a note to self. I am a beloved child of God. I am made in His image. I matter to Him. My needs matter to Him. I will not let the enemy or anyone else convince me that these things are not true. It is truly, truly a blessing to be a child of God. And for those of you that are children of God, you know exactly what I'm talking about. God loves everyone. He came to this earth as a baby, baby Jesus, and was crucified and rose again. And with that, we can have forgiveness of sins when we reach out to Him and confess our sins and claim Him as Lord and Savior. And then because of that, this saying can be so true. I am a beloved child of God. I am made in His image. I matter to Him. My needs matter to Him. I will not let the enemy or anyone convince me that these things are not true. And this can be read by anybody. It's not just the I situation, but we all matter to Jesus. We all matter to God. So just know that He loves you and you matter to Him. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, being a child of God, reach out to us or reach out to another Christian and find the same experience with Jesus that we have. Just know that He loves you you matter to Him, and don't let anybody convince you otherwise. We thank you all for joining us on this episode. Hope you've been blessed, encouraged, and inspired. And until next time, God bless.